Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Now if you've been here for a while you might know that I like to do writing experiments. I've done a fair few of them, there will be some link down below if you're interested in checking those out. And today marks the start of a new series of writing experiments. I've never really done a series of them before, the only one I can think of that is sort of a series was when I did my 10k day and the 20k day and trying to get them done in a certain amount of time, again, link down below. But today I am starting a new one and this will be all about typewriters. It will be me writing on a typewriter and getting to know a typewriter, letting you know how it feels for me to work on one and things I learn and hate along the way. Now I'm going to show you a clip of the typewriter I'll be working off of, working with, working on. It is an Hermes 2000, which doesn't tell me a single thing, but I've googled it and looked into it, and I think that this particular one was made in the 40s. So it's quite old. It is in no way an heirloom, it is in no way anything that's been passed down in my family. This was something that Marcus and I bought in, I want to say 2017, uh, secondhand in a secondhand shop in a city we were visiting, and I'm going to be working off of this. I do have an older typewriter that I got probably 10 years ago that I will also show you a clip of right now that I wanted to do this experiment on, but it seems to be broken. Now, I much prefer this one aesthetically. I think it's a lot fancier and prettier to look at, but something seems to be broken in the mechanics of that one. The carriage, the part that moves the page along, does not move. It moves for like four different keys, but not for all of them. And I do not want to do this experiment pressing a key and then spacebar and then a key and then spacebar just to get the carriage to move. But this one, the Hermes 2000, does work and I have just switched out the ribbon for it, which I will insert some clips off of. It stained my fingers quite badly and then I also realized that I put the ribbon in the wrong side out, meaning that the ink part of it was facing towards me and the keys and not facing towards the page where the ink gets you know, punched out and onto the page. So it was a good experience all around, for sure. <laughs> now in this video, I'm gonna do a bit of figuring out of how the typewriter works, how many words I can do in a sprint on it, because I tend to be very sprint-based in my writing and track my word count, and I think that's relevant, as well as just figuring out how the typewriter works, where the keys are placed, because I'm used to the QWERTY layout of most keyboards that go with most computers, where you have a row of numbers at the top and those numbers also have special symbols on them. For example, the exclamation point is on the one key. However, on this, the exclamation point is on its own key on the far right of the top row of the letters instead, so it's right next to P. So I would like to compare and contrast a little bit between the keyboard that I currently use for my desktop and the keyboard of the typewriter. And I'm gonna focus on the keys I actually think I will be using. Some of them I don't tend to use in my writing. For example, quotation marks I use a lot, but I might not use slashes in my writing. So I'm gonna ignore those. But first order of business, the one key has the one and the exclamation point. There is no one key on the typewriter at all. And my guess is you can either make a capital I or a lowercase l and get the same effect, but there is no one key here, which also means there's no exclamation point over there. That you can instead find over here, next to P. If we compare that to the keyboard I use for my computer, P, to the right of P we have O, which is the third last letter of the Swedish alphabet. And I obviously will not use that when I'm writing in English, but I do write that when I'm writing in Swedish. O on the typewriter, you can find here. O, A, Ö. Those are the last three letters of the Swedish language, which we have O, A, Ö on the computer keyboard. Going back to the keyboard again, on the number two key up here, we have the quotation mark. I use that a lot. That is again on the two down here, which is great. But then there starts to be more irregularities again, where the three has the hashtag or the number sign usually, and the pound sign. This one has a slash, and then there are more weirdness going on down the line as well. Or not more weirdness, but just more things I'm not used to. But I think the symbols I need the most for my writing is quotation marks, which are where they're supposed to be. It is the period and the comma, which are found down here on a computer keyboard, and they are found over here. That's the period and that's the comma on the typewriter. It's not going to be that big of a change, but it is up one row from where I'm used to them being. 
And then we have quotation mark, which normally is found on the plus sign next to the zero. And that is instead found here on the typewriter on the same key as the comma. So not really where I'm used to it being. There's also no enter on this that I've been able to figure out. There is tab, there is a backspace, and there is this, which doesn't seem to be doing anything. And these are shift to get an uppercase letter. Um, both of these do the same thing. And you can lock it in place like that, and then you are writing in caps lock. So you can yell at people in typewriter too. So since I don't have an enter key, when I get to the end of a line, which I'm just gonna spacebar away there, that is a typewriter telling me that you have reached the end of this line, you are coming up on this, which is the margin marker. I then have to reach over here and grab this lever instead, which I press in on, and then I move the carriage back over, and you saw it jump there for a bit, and that is it actually moving me down a line on the page. And then I push as far as I can go, and then I end back over here, which is where the left margin marker is at. I can move these, the left and the right one, I will not be doing that. However, I have to figure out how far down on the page to start, because this is the front of the page and this is the back of it, and it is looped through and pulls up here. I think here is actually a marker of how far down on the page to start, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. So having shown you all that, all the different keys and my first impressions sort of of the typewriter, it's only fair that I start writing on it, isn't it? So I'm thinking I'm going to do a 10 minute sprint. I first got to figure out what I'm going to work on because all my current projects are on the desktop and I don't really want to have a random couple pages not on the desktop. So I'm going to figure out what I'm working on. But when I've done that, I'm going to do a 10 minute sprint and let you know how it went. Count up my word count and take it from there. All right, my first 10 minute sprint is up. I'm sure I showed you some of it and uh, there were issues. This is what I managed to write, not the hello with the smudge up here because I did that when I changed the ink, but the rest of it is what I wrote in these 10 minutes. This is 105 words if I've counted it correctly, which is less than I would normally get done in a 10 minute sprint. I'm gonna put some numbers up on the screen right now for how I usually tend to do in my 10 minute sprints. I'm gonna grab a few that I've done this year and put those stats up just to compare and contrast. I don't have those numbers in front of me right now. My computer is currently turned off, so I can't actually compare right now, but I feel like it's a lot less than I usually tend to get. Well, not a lot less, but at least less. And then there were some other issues. For example, I'm sure you saw that a key got stuck, a key high up on the right hand side. It is the accent key, but I have to use that in place for apostrophes because I don't have those anywhere on the keyboard. And that one kept getting stuck and I have a fair few times where like I tried writing I've as an I have right here. You can see that right here, that it sort of ended up on top of the V, as if the V had the accent on it, like you would do with certain E's and stuff in some languages. Also, I have a backspace key. It's on the top left side of the keyboard, and I used it a fair few times, but it doesn't actually pull the ink from the page. I'd have to use like Tipex or Whiteout or something for that, which I don't have. So sometimes I just pressed another key on top of the former key, like this one. This is supposed to say time but I accidentally put TH and then I put an I over the H. So not ideal. Marcus is sitting behind the camera, you can see him, but he just informed me that some people tend to go back and put X's over their misspelled words. And then I assume put the whole word again. 
not like, oh, I put an H in time, X that out, but actually X out the whole mistaken word and then put time again. And I also had some issues, some formatting issues on here that I probably wouldn't have had on a computer. For example, at the very beginning, again, with the accent key getting stuck, I now have a space between the I apostrophe M, like between the apostrophe and the M. But when I manually went back and counted my words, I counted that as one word. Some other things I noticed is, of course, also how loud it is and how hard I had to press down on the keys to actually make make the letter happen. And also my Q key got stuck, which was concerning. I also messed up somewhere and put an O or an R or something instead of a period because that's where that key usually is. So I'm gonna have to relearn how I type, both that I have to be harder on the keys than I am on my normal keyboard, but also where things are placed and that's not gonna be fun. <laughs> I know that Marcus looked into actually using a different keyboard setup. Instead of QWERTY, he was looking into using Dvorak, which is a different layout. The keys are in the same place, but the letters are not in the same place. He looked into using that to speed up his typing. Talk to him about that, I'm not getting into that. This is not as different, because this is still the QWERTY layout, but a few keys have moved. Well, I suppose they've actually moved to the modern keyboards, I guess this was a standard beforehand. But for me, this is difficult and different and I'll just have to get used to it. Another thing that's different between the typewriter and the desktop or laptop is that I tend to use indents in the word processing programs I'm using. If that's Google Docs, if it's LibreOffice, if it's Scrivener, whatever, I tend to have an indentation so that when I press enter and start a new line, I am slightly further in on the page. You know what I'm talking about. That's what it looks like in most books and stuff. I have that set up usually. This is a straight line. It all begins in one place. And I don't actually know, I can adjust my margins, but I don't actually know if I can adjust indentations without like tabbing my way in there. Obviously there are a fair few differences between a typewriter and a keyboard. And seeing as how I have other experiments planned with the typewriter coming up, I should try to learn these things. But apart from learning the differences between the typewriter keyboard and the computer keyboard, I am gonna have to do things differently. First of all, I'm gonna have to manually spell check words, which may result in me ending up in more typos, also because I can't use backspace and remove what I've written. I could go back and do the thing Mark suggested of putting X's over misspelled words, but that then takes time away from a sprint that it wouldn't take away from just, you know, backspacing a few times and moving on. Apart from manually having to spell check my words, I'm also gonna have to manually count my words. Now I'm hoping to reach a point where I have an estimate of how many words do I typically have on a page. When I've written like 20, 30, 40 pages on the typewriter, maybe there's an average. Maybe I'll have like 250 words on average. I'll go somewhere between 200 and 300 words per page and I can start counting the one page as 250 words as I move forward instead of doing what I've done now and manually count every single word. For events such as NaNoWriMo or other times when I want to know my word count fast, manually counting the words really is not ideal and then it would be easier if I knew that one page is roughly 250 words and just run with that instead. That will of course not be as accurate as a word counter in a digital program, but it will be better than me manually counting out every single word. But I think this is where I'm going to leave you for today. Again, I have upcoming projects planned and upcoming experiments planned with the typewriter, so you'll, you haven't seen the last of it and you have plenty of clickety-clackety sounds to look forward to in the future, as do I. I will say though that the experiments I have planned down the line with this typewriter suddenly feel like a much bigger challenge after having done this test version because I am so much slower and it's so loud. <laughs> So we'll see how any of them turn out. We'll see if I have to change anything or take more time to do something. I do think it's possible that I'll pick up my speed down the line, but if I'm gonna get as fast on the typewriter as I am on the computer keyboard, we shall see. But that's a problem for a later day, isn't it? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear down below if you have ever worked off of a typewriter, if you own a typewriter, if you'd like to try it, if this video has sort of chased you away from the idea of trying because also I already somehow already again have ink on my fingers because the ribbon got stuck so I feel there are a lot of things that can go wrong with typewriters a lot of technical difficulties that you would not experience on a computer on the other hand a computer can blue screen a computer can lose power a computer can freeze and have lag you know there are issues 
that can be had on both sides of the spectrum. So issues all around. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another video soon, so I'll see you then. Bye!